Welcome to this week's episode of Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Kendall Smith. On this week's episode, we'll take you out to the ball game as Carolina baseball started its season and recap an exciting week for Gamecock basketball. Everything and anything from the past week of Gamecock athletics tonight on Capital City Sports. <laughs> Starting off the week, women's basketball had one of the biggest wins in program history last Monday. CCS reporter Ethan Still was at Colonial Life Arena as the top-ranked Gamecocks took down the Yukon Huskies. After several attempts, Don Staley and the South Carolina Gamecocks can finally check one thing off their list, defeating the Yukon Huskies. And they did it at home in front of a sold-out crowd. The Gamecocks would start out extremely strong defensively, only allowing two points in the entirety of the first quarter. Senior Ty Harris would be instrumental for the Gamecocks tonight, and she had six after one. The second quarter saw much more offense from both sides, and the seniors would play big roles for both teams. UConn's Crystal Dangerfield finished the half with nine and held the South Carolina lead to eight with a half to play. The second half began with a barrage of Carolina threes and guard Ty Harris kept her hot streak going from the first half. The UConn coach Gino Ariema attributed this run as to one of the keys for South Carolina in this game. However, Dangerfield seemed to will her team back, preventing Carolina from pulling away from reach. The score settled at about the 10 point margin and it felt like one that could go either way at any moment in time. The Gamecocks would surge again late, and a combination of the freshmen and the experienced seniors on the team, all playing with maturity, allowed South Carolina to defeat the Huskies for the first time in five consecutive attempts, 70 to 52. This is the first win in program history for the Gamecocks against the Huskies, and Ty Harris, as mentioned, was a big part of that. Crazy stat of the night, Harris and Cook combined for a total zero turnovers, and if there's any way to win against one of the nation's leading programs, that's a way to do it. The Gamecocks, however, cannot dwell on this victory. With just one day of rest, they look forward to hosting Auburn here at home on Thursday night. For Capital City Sports, I'm Ethan Still. Thank you so much, Ethan. While the men's team isn't quite cruising like the women, they've certainly hit their stride as of late. The Gamecocks won their fifth game in six tries when they took down the Georgia Bulldogs 75-59 to in Athens on Wednesday. The team led wire to wire in a game that was never really in doubt. Sophomore A.J. Lawson had a game-high 20 points and held Georgia star Anthony Edwards to 16 points on 4 of 13 shooting. Women's basketball returned to the friendly confines of Colonial Life Arena on Thursday as they looked for their 18th straight win. Cade Crenshaw was there as the Gamecocks took on Auburn. Thanks, Kendall. Fresh off a big win over the Yukon Huskies, the Gamecocks returned to their conference schedule tonight and didn't miss a beat as they cruised to a 26-point win over Auburn. South Carolina's 24th win of the season was a team effort as five Gamecocks scored in double digits on Thursday night. Freshman Zia Cook and Aaliyah Boston led the way with a team-high 13 points each, and senior guard Ty Harris added in 12 points of her own to go along with Makai Herbert Harrigan and Lee Lee Grissett, both scoring 11 points. Although they never led, Auburn did keep things tight with the Gamecocks, especially early on as they drew as close as three points to South Carolina's lead early in the second quarter. That's as close as they would get, however, as from that point on, the Gamecocks never looked back. Dawn Staley's squad closed out the first half on a 20-4 run to lead the Tigers at halftime, 42-23. Throughout the third and fourth quarters on Thursday night, South Carolina continued to dominate and extend their lead over the Auburn Tigers before securing a 79-53 win. Now just five games away from postseason play, the Gamecocks will look to continue their winning ways on Monday night against the Vanderbilt Commodores. For Capital City Sports, I'm Kay Crenshaw. Back to you, Kendall. 
Cade, thank you so much. Also on Thursday, softball suffered its first loss of the season to the Texas Tech Raiders in Game 1 of the Clearwater Elite Invitational. It didn't get much better for South Carolina as the weekend went on. They lost Games 2 and 4 to Virginia Tech and the top-ranked Washington Huskies in close fashion. They were able to route Kansas Friday night to get their only victory of the weekend. They'll be back in action later on this week. Men's tennis also had a rough weekend at the ITA Indoor Championships. The team fell to the fifth-ranked North Carolina Tar Heels on Friday and the ninth-ranked Columbia Lions on Saturday. The Gamecocks were able to knock off the Wisconsin Badgers on Sunday and now sit at 6-3 on the season. Carolina baseball was able to help salvage the weekend for Gamecock fans. The team opened up the 2020 campaign last weekend with a series against the Holy Cross Crusaders. The team dominated on opening day, winning 10 to nothing to get Mark Kingston his first opening day win during his time here. It was more of the same in game two with a 9 to 4 victory. The team went for the sweep yesterday in the rain. Catherine Averill was at Founders Park with the coverage. Gamecock baseball is off to a great start for the 2020 season. This series we're playing the Holy Cross Crusaders and we currently have beat them the past two days. Today we're looking to sweep this series on this rainy Sunday in Founders Park. In the final game of the series against Holy Cross, the majority of the Gamecock runs came in, in the third inning. At the top of the second inning, Holy Cross struck out against Gamecock picture Brandon Jordan. South Carolina put four runs on the board in the third inning. Noah Myers, Wes Clark, Noah Campbell, and Jeff Heinrich all scored. Later on in the bottom of the fourth inning, first baseman Wes Clark hit a solo home run towards center field. At the bottom of the fifth inning, the game was called short due to inclement weather, and the Gamecocks swept the series against Holy Cross. The final score was 5-0. The Gamecocks are back in action this Tuesday at 3 p.m. against Winthrop. For Capital City Sports, I'm Katherine Averill. Back to you, Kendall. Men's basketball continued its postseason push on Saturday when they faced off against the Tennessee Volunteers. Holly Coldell was at Colonial Life Arena for a thriller. Thanks, Kendall. The Gamecocks have a lot of momentum going into these last six regular season games after their two-point win against the Tennessee Volunteers. The game started off slow, similarly to their last matchup in early January, where the Volunteers won 56-55. While the scoring was low, the amount of fouls was not. There was a total of 52 fouls, 24 on USC and 28 on Tennessee. At the beginning of the second half, the score was 30-29 with the Gamecocks up by one. Tennessee's John Fulkerson scored a career-high 25 points, while USC's highest scorer was Mike Kotsar with 13. By the two-minute mark, the energy in Colonial Life Arena was palpable. There were five turnovers and three lead changes in the final 90 seconds. Kotsar came in clutch for the Gamecocks, scoring four for four on free throws in the final 20 seconds. UT failed to score on their last possession, bringing the final score to 63-61 USC. USC will take on Mississippi State this Wednesday at 9 p.m. at the Humphrey Coliseum, which will broadcast on the SEC Network. For Capital City Sports, I'm Holly Caldell. Back to you, Kendall. What an exciting game, Holly. Thank you. In other basketball news, the men's basketball team received a level one violation allegation last week from the NCAA. The allegation is related to the FBI probe into bribery and corruption in college basketball. Former assistant coach Lamont Evans is accused of accepting bribes from an agent to speak to former star forward P.J. Dozier. Both athletic director Ray Tanner and head coach Frank Martin have denied wrongdoing. Coming up later tonight, the women's basketball team continues its homestand as they welcome Vanderbilt. If 10,000 fans pack the Colonial Life Arena, it will mark the 80th consecutive game that at least 10,000 people have come. And the baseball team will be looking to improve to 4-0 tomorrow at 4 p.m. when they take on the Winthrop Eagles. Junior Thomas Farr is slated to make his first start of the season for the Gamecocks. Be sure to look out for coverage of both of those games and all, thing ga all things Gamecock Athletics on our social media at CCS on SGTV. 
for Capital City Sports. I'm Kendall Smith. Have a great night, Carolina.